Good afternoon, everyone. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here, coming at you from beautiful Morocco by Guyana. Today, I'm going to take you to make some indigenous drinks here in the forest. We have three special drinks. Yes, three very special drinks. The first one is Paiwari, which is made from cassava. The other one is Fly, which is made from the purple potato. And the other one is Warup, which is made from cane. So you guys stay tuned, you're in for a treat. And then after we make the drinks, we're going over to the village. We're gonna go look for a paddle for myself. We're gonna see local life. And then after that, we got dinner. And if we're lucky today, we're gonna to try the Tacoma worm. It's a worm that comes from a tree. They open up the tree, they pull it out, and you eat it live. Stay tuned. So drinks over here. Stacy, you ready? Ready, of course. Are these alcoholic beverages? Yes, they are alcoholic. Oh. So um, that's even more special. We're gonna enjoy this, right? <laughs> yes, yes. I can't wait. Then over here, we're making some more cassava bread. No. No? Is no, that cassava? That's a this is for the paiwari. Oh, that's the paiwari. Yes. yes, this is the paiwari cassava bread. This is the cassava after you finish grating it and you sift it. Put it in a mojito pan to get brown. When it gets brown, this is this is this is how it goes. Okay. The paiwari nice cassava. Toasty. Yes. Look at that. Yes. It's hard. And after it gets brown, you 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 break it and then you add it to in the water. And you put it in the water and you soak it for one day and one night. You add some red cow drip in it and then and sugar. And you left it for one day and one night to ferment. Then you strain off. When you strain it, it starts to ferment. So this is the paiwari. Oh, this is already done? This already finished. No, okay, okay, finished perfect. Product. All right, so this is fermented cassava. It start fermented because it start to boil. Wow, so basically they use cassava for everything, right? Cassava bread, drink. Mm -hmm. It's so good. It's very refreshing. Mm -hmm. A little bit of bitterness, that's why it reminds me of the mobby. Exactly. But it tastes so good. Ch chuck some ice in here. Perfect for a hot day in the forest, right? Yeah, this is like cassava wine, basically, right? Uh, super light in alcohol, refreshing, especially a hot day like today. This is yes. satisfying. Very much so. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Cheers, my time. Thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. So how much alcohol is in here? Very little, right? Feels light. Alcohol in is when it, it, it depends it, on. No, it's, it's fermented, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just saying, like, what well, percentage wise is very low. How strong, how strong, how, how long it was the air standing. How long you want it? So basically, the longer it sits, the, more, the stronger it gets. Yes. Okay, so this one feels very light. I say, like, very like 3% or something. So we have potato that we'll be making fly with the potato wine. So we have the raw potato, we chip the potato in a pot and we boil it with just about two inches of water above the potato in the pot. After boiling it and the potato is mashed, then we let it stand or mix all together and it becomes in one with the water. So this is the product after and we'll strain it, strain out the husk or the remains from the potato and then we go into this form, the thin liquid form without any substrate. Basically what we're doing is that in order for the end product to come, we use six pounds of potato, raw potato that boiled six pounds to five gallons of water and we add six pounds of sugar let's stand for five to seven days and then it's alcohol so stacy you said it's smooth it's sweet let's see oh yeah i think the fermentation right there mm, it's yeah, good though it's good really mm, nice potato drink and this is one of the drink that is preferred mostly but I uh, believe it's first priority. I love it, it's fresh. So it's like a, I would say it's like one of these nice berry drinks, right? That's what it tastes more like, the berry, right? Well, it's delicious, I love it. Stacy, cheers. Cheers. You like it, right? Awesome. I love this. Mm. Mm. Really, really nice. Like I said, smooth. Smooth operator. So like you guys um, drink this for parties? Yeah. Okay, after the fermentation, we drink. Just like beer, you take a couple of shots and then you... If, if you don't know how to dance, you hit the dance floor after a couple of shots. Uh, after a couple. I mean, this one isn't that bad though in terms of alcohol, right, as well? Because it feels the fermentation. I feel it, but it's not like crazy. In uh, in Suriname, I tried like some, some rice beer and they let it sit for like a week. Same thing, it was like, but it was strong. How long did this one sit for? Five days? No, this, this is just... This is a young one. Yeah, this is a day. That's why I was saying, because you said five, seven, 
10 days, that's going to be strong. That's yeah, for the parties. Yeah, it all depends on how strong you want it. Maybe... Stronger we, the better, man. Stronger yeah. the better. One drink and that's it. We never tried, <laughs> but... We, we never, One month! <laughs> I, I was drunk before I know it was like sitting for like a year. And it's only clear. Really oh, I'm sure. Yeah. She tried something that has been sitting there for a year, so it was extremely strong. So Gary, what's next? Cane juice. Cane juice. So we're having cane juice, which is wow up. Wow up. Basically, we have this piece of equipment, and it's a locally made equipment out of a tree trunk. We carve, and we put a snipe here with, with veins running through so that cane juice could run through. The juice could run through into the container. The piece of equipment here is the name, it's Molo. 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 So this is how they extract the cane juice yeah. from the cane. From the cane. That's it. It's a pressing method. Yeah, it's a presser. Yeah. Okay, so, and over here we have a banana leaf, or what is it? This is gonna wrap the bucket into this. Okay. So there we go, pressing. And you're cracking the, cracking the joints first. You don't press right down. Just crack each joint. Good. And you turn on the other side and, and it goes. And down, down it. Hold it. Good. Just crack each joint. It's coming out, huh? So you twisted it? So I've had this in India. In lots of places around the world, I've never seen this machine, this presser. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a very unique uh, presser, um, you know, handmade. Usually in India, you walk on the streets and they have this machine, and you put it through, and then they keep putting it through. But there, they add some lime. So they always add a little bit of lime to sugar cane. But this is going to be pure, right? Just pure sugar cane. I mean, I love it. So they you put it through, they twisted it, they turned it. Now he's like twisting it again. I mean, literally extracting all that juice. Oh, so good. Super sweet though, lots of sugar. I've never seen this machine in my life, man. I'm ready. You guys ready for this? Yeah. Easy as boy. Crack for us. Just quick, just crack. quick cracks. Crack. Oh, this is easy. <laughs> it's easy for the beginners. Or for the I mean, beginners. Yeah. I'm a man, you know, man. Come on. Yes, and now we turn it. So they just keep cracking it. I hope you know this is appetizer. Eh? This is the appetizer. Yeah, you open your appetite. Exercise. For sure. <laughs> Alright, easy. Careful your finger. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Almost had his finger in there, dude. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, just twist that up. Oh no. Oh wow. More juice. More juice. Warm those arms. Warm them. Extract it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh! Wow! So now he's ringing it, right? He's twisting it up. Wow! What a process! And now that sugar cane is gonna taste good, right? Finish. Finish. Okay, let's drink. So, what do you have here? Cane. It's just cane. So here we have some cane. You want veggie sauce? Yeah. There is your sausage juice. Very good too. Mm-hmm. That's good. Warup is different from sugarcane juice because warup sits in a container for seven days and then it's been fermented, right? So it's an alcoholic sugarcane juice. All right, so let's try warup. Let's go. This cane juice has been left standing for seven days. And now you're here to sample or to drink. It's war up, by the way. Thank you. Let's give it a try. Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm, yeah. He was telling us you, you do 10 days, you can do 7 days. The stronger you are, the longer you leave it. That's how drunk I was. <laughs> you were drunk off this? No, 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 this. <sighs> This is okay, this is smooth. This is good. Mm -hmm. Oh, so good. Yeah. Are you ready for worms? Yeah, of course, always <laughs> ready for worms, always. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I haven't eaten it like this, like raw, or like alive. Uh, I don't know, I'm a little nervous. 
It's it's in there? It's in there. It's that's, in there? That's the trunk of the palm tree. Here we are at the harvesting of the Tukuma worm. But before we go into the actual harvesting from this trunk, I must let you know that this is an Ite palm tree trunk. So the Ite tree has been cut down with an axe. This here is the axe. So we cut down the Ite tree and leave it where we make wedges into the trunk of the tree. A couple of places, like about the axe length. And we cover it with the ite leaf, leave it for about four to six weeks. Then we assume that it's been producing um, the tukuma worms. First thing you would do is the song because to get the song from inside, because you would hear the hollowness of the trunk. And at sometimes he can even put his ears next to the trunk and hear them. So there he's quite sure. So you go into the splitting of the trunk. Oh, uh, I don't know if I want to eat that raw. <laughs> that looks so gross. I take it from the trunk. And while in the back down, we don't really get a lot of things to prepare it. So if you're hungry, you can just help yourself to a quick snack. Crush the head first, <laughs> and then we eat the body. It's slimy but satisfying. <laughs> you know what? I'm here. I guess just take the head off. I can't take the head. No, you you hold the head. Hold the head. Yeah. yeah you, you hold the head. Good squeeze. Oh gosh, guys, it's actually very scary. One bite straight on from the head. <laughs> Right below uh, the head. In, yeah. In case yeah. you swallow the head, you have to chew it. I don't want to touch this. And chew, don't swallow. <laughs> I need something to flush that down. Ugh. All right, what? You don't like it? I don't like it. No, I don't like it. I did it live. Oh, right here, right here, right here. Okay. In that hole. Look, he's pulling all of them out. How many we got? A lot. Anyone done okay. You trying it again? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying again. David, when you hold it, close your mouth and make sure it snaps before you chew with the head. Keep all your right. mouth closed so that the, so the, grab the, here. the stopping won't come out. I guess I'm just like, how do I grab it? Just grab it like this, from the two sides. I guess it just, I don't even know how to do this. Oh, you ripped it off? He ripped the head off for me. Yeah, chew. Chew. Mm. Chew. Chew. Mm. Chew. Taste here. It's too thick skin, but inside you feel coconut, right? Mm hmm. That's wild. That's like a snack in the jungle, huh? I look like we won't be getting enough. We get some more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see a bunch. Yeah, they're coming out. That's one way to eat it. Now we are going to uh, we'll put it on some. Give me one. We just stick the, the worms on here and put over the fire to roast. All right, guys. So we're gonna wash the worms. Get ready for the roast. Good, good, good. So you're gonna put it on a little stick, huh? Yeah. You hook it on the stick. You put more than one onto the fire. Ooh, popping. That one exploded already. Now that's what I call barbecue in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> they put three worms on a stick, put it in the fire. After a few minutes, they're roasty toasty. It's going to be nice and crunchy. This is the way you should eat it. I suggest this is the way. So how much time do we need here? I got to roast. You got to roast for a little while? Yeah, let yeah. cook. One of them exploded already. No, no, that, that was not from, I don't think that was in the fire. The one that I bought, I think it's... Oh, because when, when, yeah, when you punctured it? When you impaled it? Not me. <laughs> I was no part, taking part in none of that. Wow. Just an innocent bystander. You know, it reminds me of a Greek dish called koretsi, 
where they put all the organs on a stick and then they wrap it with intestines. Because as you can see, the, like it looks like that, oh. like very round. Yeah, organs on a stick. We eat this. We could eat it with cassava bread. We could eat with rice. We could eat whatever you want. You could even just like that. Okay. So we just take it off. It's been roasted, and then you could make one eat or you could eat in part. Mm -hmm. uh, my turn. Just pull this guy up. Get him like this. And just go. Very good. Nice. Coconut. Mm -hmm. Coconut. Very nice. You could add a little salt if you want. Yeah, I think the, the skin is a little easier to eat now. <laughs> Not as tough as before. But the inside, super gooey. The one thing you don't want is the head. Some you now I'm gonna try it fried. Oh, my favorite Can I get a piece of the soft one? Mm-hmm. Way better. Did you put a soft mm. one? Fried the best. Fried the best. Fried is the best. It's amazing. Can you saw it? Yeah. Alright, the coma worm is definitely a must try when you come here. You have to try it. I would recommend the fried one. The roast one's okay. The one where you're literally having it alive. Not my favorite, definitely not my favorite. Okay, well, we did it, we ate the worm. Now we're going to the village. I'm gonna find myself a paddle. I'm gonna find myself some souvenirs for my kids. I'm excited. My friend, no more worm. No more worm. No more worm. I'm done with the worm. You finished. I'm uh, finished. Eat all. <laughs> I'll see you in a little bit, I'm going to the village. Oh, you're going to the village? Yeah, just for a little bit. All right, here we go, which boat? Same boat, right? Get on here. Amazing. Love this boat. Whoa, get my spot. Right here. Alright, what are these guys doing up here? Chilling? Yeah, they're just chilling. Are they from here? No, no they just come to visit. First time. First time, huh? How long is the, the ride to the village? Like five minutes? No, it, it take about ten. Ten minutes? About ten minutes, eh? Fifteen? Ten to fifteen minutes. So it's gonna take us around 15 minutes to get to the village. This is a small creek, right? So we came on a big creek, then it turned into the smaller one. Yeah. Oh, wow. After a quick 15 minute ride, we're here. There we have the bridge. And over here is the village. Hey guys, how you doing? You good? That is built uh, a couple of months ago. Okay. Just to accommodate, like, you can do various things on, under it. It's just a bit up. Yes, yeah, so we have a few guys chilling right there. They were telling me this is the weekend here. You know, it's Sunday, they're relaxing, they're hearing some music. And this is the village, right? So I'm guessing this is like a school over here? No, this is a guest house. This is a guest house? Yeah. This is where the village accommodates guests. So if you want to come and spend, uh, let's say for a weekend. You can stay here. You can stay here, you could book a room. And over here we have the main park area, or recreational area, yeah, right? Recreation. People come here, they play soccer, they yeah. play lots of things, right? Volleyball. So, yeah, so we participate in three basic disciplines on this ground here. We participate in soccer, which is football, and we have cricket, as well as volleyball action. So as you notice around the ground, we have bleachers like this one here, we have one across the field, we have there. And, uh, from time to time, residents or the locals come out and we have a very good thing. What we're doing now is uh, with some of these beautiful ladies here have crafts. So they went to get the crafts. They also have a few paddles. So they're going to bring it all so I can see. You know, I want to have something for myself, something for my kids. And uh, I hope it's cool. I hope it's nice. I'm sure it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. It's just the only size. It's the only size they got right now? Mm -hmm. oh, how big is this one? It's about three feet. Okay, so what's the price on this? Does it even know? This will buy the pump price. <laughs> three thousand. So three thousand is something like fifteen US dollars. Yeah, that would be. A, yeah. Okay, so for fifteen US dollars, I'm taking it, right? It's nice. I just gotta stand down when I get home, put it on my wall. I have one from the Surinamese River, so this will go right next to it. So it'll be the little brother, though. <laughs> it's okay. You have some crafts here. So they got these earrings. They have this purse right here. Necklace, right? Beautiful necklace. Okay, and then you have this vase, right? A little vase. 
Which one? Which one you choose? Okay, so I'll take these, these two, and then this one. The blue. Yeah. So I'm taking three sets of earrings, a thousand each, plus the paddle, three thousand, which is about like thirty U.S. dollars. Um, and then you still have what else do you have over there? Just tissue. Tissue rack. Tissue rack, huh? All right. So you were six thousand, right? Total. Here we go. Six thousand, guys. Ooh, do you have change? Anybody have change? No change. Okay, so I have five right now. Um, how do I get her change for this? Anybody have change? No? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll see you later. Bye. So I guess I got what I came here for, right? Got the paddle. We actually commissioned the paddle from a guy. He's like, I'll make a paddle for you. I'll get it ready for tomorrow. He said it's going to be five feet. Five feet? Big paddle? Yeah, how am I going to take that? I have no idea. It's okay, though. I'll get it to America for sure. Okay, so I guess we're going to go back to the to the resort, we're gonna relax for a little bit, and then we're gonna have dinner. We're gonna have a special dinner. Super special, can't wait. How are you doing, Jude? You going? Yes. You gonna jump? Yeah, you gotta jump. Why are you doing it? One Guyana. Woo, amazing. So this is the bridge, right? Yep. Beautiful, short bridge, crosses the river, and this is where the tree fell. So the tree fell here, and that's why they call it Marakabai, right? So the heart of the Morocco tree. Wow, looks incredible. The water right now? I love it. This is All for right. future content. Is that content we're gonna use? At this time of the day, what do people do? Just relax, go in the water? Siesta time. Siesta time. <laughs> you don't have enough here. You gotta grab the closest hammock or you just gotta go in the black water and let that water cool you down. That's what you gotta do. Best water in the world. It's so good for you because it has tannins in the water. You know, you drink red wine. Uh -huh. They say red wine is good for you. Well, this water has the same tannins because of the rainforest foliage that falls into it. Oh, wow. So that's why it's, uh, the water is dark in color. So you can either go in the water, relax on a hammock. We still have about two and a half hours before dinner. I might just crash on the hammock. I'm tired. We woke up at 4, 4.45 this morning. Yep. My eyes are tired. All right, let's go. So we have a two hour break. You can either go to sleep or go in the creek. I'm taking a 90 minute nap. I'm tired. I'll see you at dinner. 90 minutes later, we are ready for dinner. We have some barbecue chicken. We have boil and fried breadfruit. It's boil and fried? Yeah, yeah. boil and fried breadfruit. And which is this one, the tasso? That's tasso. the tasso. Tasso, which is like a beef dish, right? Yeah, and this is the farine. Farine, so this is uh, this is also cassava, correct? Yeah, yeah like a couscous kind of It's like yeah. a couscous, yeah. so it's a very grainy cassava dish, yeah, right? Correct. Amazing. Well, how do we eat this? I mean, do we mix? Is there something you pair together or? You can put the um, farine, put the beef with the gravy on it. The thing behind these two is that this is largely the cuisine of Rupununi, right. the time that you're going to. Yeah. Rupununi? Yes. So they eat this predominantly. And tasso basically is sun-dried or preserved beef. Oh, it's preserved yes. beef? Yes. Yes. So it's like salted sort sort sun salted beef mm -hmm. um they use that there and then it's then converted so you can cook it you can fry it you can put it in stews it just goes back to the consistency of like normal beef oh my friend i am ready yes i'm excited so good so you mix right yes so what you're having here is a representation of um indigenous cuisine again but this time from our rupanoni savannas which is region nine we're currently in region five so in Region 9, uh, they usually have like more of a roast culture. Mm -hmm. So the beef you're having is dried beef. It's, it's salted and dried in the sun, and we're having it stewed. Got right? it. So it's called tasso. Tasso. Yes. So it's dried and then stewed. Exactly. Tasso, and we're having it with farine. Well, instead of baking it, they parch this. They parch this. Yes, the cassava greens. And this is the bitter cassava. Okay. Yeah, so we're having golden farine and tasso. Golden farine. Yes. Bon appetit. Bon appetit, guys. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, I love it. Nice tender meat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The taste has been dried. Right, and the texture of the farine, as you know, you uh, we told you before, it's like couscous sort of like a mm -hmm. green. Yeah, in Italy yeah. we have something called paro. Yeah. Very similar. And um, a good rice substitute. 
Yeah, super healthy, right? And people people make farina in different ways. Everybody has their own way, but this is really nice and fluffy. Mm-hmm. Mm. Combination is amazing. Very, very nice and fluffy. And what I did is I also grabbed some of that gravy and mixed mm -hmm. it in so it like soaks up into the into the farine. Yeah. Tastes almost like chicken broth. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm. Or beef broth. This is exactly what I needed. Wow. So good. <laughs> So lots of beef in Guyana. Oh yeah, we have our Rupanuni is famous, especially the south, for their ranches. Mm -hmm. So once you hit region nine, right, you're gonna be the best cattle. Roast is it? Chicken, beef. Oh wow! And we also have a little bit of that wiri wiri pepper. I taste it now. I think there's like little bits here and there, right? Yeah, and they got bits of veggies in here too. So this is almost like a fried rice. Mm -hmm. So they have like a little bit of carrots, sweet peppers. Yeah. I'll tell you, and this is a surprise for me because I haven't had this dish, and it's amazing. I love it. It is, it is amazing. Farina and tassel. Mm. So what's our next uh Yes, next so dish? the next thing on the menu is uh, boil and fry breadfruit with barbecue chicken. So boil and fry is a big deal here. We boil and fry all kinds of different, um, as we call it, dry fruit food, right? Mm -hmm. We can boil and fry cassava, plantain, it was Tonight, it's breadfruit. So breadfruit, breadfruit is literally a fruit that we harvest from a tree yeah. and it has like a it's called breadfruit because when you cut it cut it off and you cook it it has like a a bread consistency yeah but it's a fruit but it's a fruit there we go mm -hmm. mm. almost feels like potatoes right yeah very similar to mm -hmm. potato same consistency but this is Definitely tastier. But, yeah, it's like a, 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 a like a sweet potato and um, a potato or a sweet potato and an edo had a kid. Mm -hmm. Right, because it has a, a little bit of sweetness there too. Mm. And next to it we have the chicken, right? The barbecue. Barbecue. Mm-hmm. Oh, love the it. The sauce on here is really nice. Love the sauce. And the outside is crispy, but the inside of the chicken is very tender. And Beautiful. moist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. So the the barbecue it reminds me of like Carolina style sauces. Oh, it's it's like more like a glaze, not like too thick. Well, as I mentioned before, Region Nine, mm -hmm. which is being represented tonight, very big on roast. Okay. So once you land there in the Rupununi, everything is roasted. Let them roasted. Grills everywhere. You're gonna have roast chicken. Amazing. There's a moss. Lots of meat here. Get the rest of that barbecue sauce. And we have one more thing to show you. So we have lemon grass tea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you call this like village tea. Or bush tea. Bush tea. Bush tea. It's literally like a grass. So some people call it fever grass as well. Mm -hmm. We're big believers in our bush tea here in Guyana. Right? So basically anything can be made into tea. Mm -hmm. So this is perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Oh, very Healthy. grassy and mm -hmm. lemon at the same time, right? Literally lemon, lemony flavor. Mm -hmm. So our sides today, farine, boil and fried breadfruit, but we forgot the corn. <laughs> roasted corn. Roasted corn. The roasted theme, right? Yes, our theme is roasted, region nine roasted. There we go. Mm-hmm. Mm. This corn is tiny. So this is literally just roasted corn, nothing else on it, and the flavors are popping. Mm-hmm. No butter, nothing. Oh, it's great. Mm -hmm. Super healthy. Mm -hmm. The entire meal was really right. Mm -hmm. From the boiler fried breadfruit to the grilled chicken, the farine. Plus, it's all organic. Exactly. From mm. the earth to the table. And we have dessert over here. We have a cassava pudding. David just bust from the main course straight to dessert. I had to. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Cassava, Cassava bread. bread pudding. Cassava bread pudding. Cassava bread pudding. Yeah, this is going to be definitely interesting. 
So this is kind of dense. Mm -hmm. right? It's like a dense cake. It has cherries. Oh my god, I smell the vanilla. This is like mm. a cone. Oh yeah. It's like a cassava cone. It's super dense. Yeah. But super nice. Very nice. Not too decadent, but you definitely feel that sugar. Mm hmm Oh yeah. Nice finish that meal like this. Mm. Nice, really nice Love finish. It. The cherries, vanilla, great combination. Yeah. Really and all this made with cassava. A little bit gluey mm -hmm. and gummy, but really in a good way. Yeah, yeah. In a good way. Yeah, it's not one of these puddings which is like literally melting. Mm -hmm. This one's like condensed. It stays compact, right? In America Bay. So that was our afternoon experience. So we made drinks. We ate worms, basically a live worm, roasted worm, we fly, fly, fly. Paiwari. Paiwari. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. And then water. For, uh, fermented cane. Yeah. I've never had that before in my life, and I've had sugar cane a lot of places, but this is something unique. So they ferment these drinks. You know, this is how they make their local alcohol, right? And then after that, I went to the village. I bought a paddle, bought some stuff for my kids, and then we had dinner. And I truly love the paro and the tasso. And the tasso. That was Korean amazing. Tasso. This feels more like a backyard you know barbecue style you know experience this plate the other one was more unique and different than i that i've had yeah. you know but amazing guys i hope you enjoyed this video we are exhausted we've been up for i don't even know 18 <laughs> hours right now but if you did please give us a thumbs up comment below subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the morning right here we're gonna have bacon saltfish right yep i can't wait bush bush style who's coming over there <laughs>